Hello, my name is Dave Farnia, and today we'll be looking at ways to improve modeling and automation efficiency to make electric device design more effective. In today's webinar, we'll start with a short overview, and then we'll look at JMAG's solutions to automate modeling. We'll examine script functions, analysis templates, parametric analyses and optimization tools, JMAG VTB or virtual test bench, and finally report functions. We'll conclude today's webinar with a short summary. So there are two main reasons for automating your analysis. The first reason is to reduce the total analysis time by eliminating the need to repeat the same setup numerous times. The second reason is to reduce the chances of making a setup mistake when repeating an analysis. Both of these tie into a larger overall theme which is reducing the total time for, that you're working on an analysis. An additional benefit is that automated analyses can serve as a template that can be used by different users to ensure that the same process is being applied in every analysis. The total analysis time for a problem includes the time to set up the model and the time to generate results. The actual analysis time to run the analysis is constrained by the accuracy requirements of the simulation. So if the actual analysis time or the calculation is constrained by the precision requirements, the ability to reduce the total analysis time comes in the form of reducing the model setup and the model result generation. So analysis automation and improved efficiency with JMAG. JMAG has a variety of solutions for automation and efficiency improvements. JMAG Virtual Test Bench is effectively analysis templates, whereby you can apply a template to an analysis. So you input the model geometry and then set the conditions or set the results that you would like to obtain and then JMAG will take care of setting up the intermediate steps of gen and generating the results. JMAG Designer Parametric Functions will convert geometric and analysis conditions into adjustable parameters. JMAG Designer Optimized Calculation Functions is, in, is, is an extension to the parametric function and will allow you to run a more efficient parametric calculation. JMAG Designer Analysis Template Functions are model templates, so whereas VTB is an analysis template where you define the results that you want to see from it and JMAG will set up the individual analyses, the model template is the same but only for models or limited to only setting up the models. JMAG Designer Script Functions allow you to automate JMAG Designer setup and analysis through scripting features and JMAG Designer Report Functions allows you to automate the report creation process. So let's start with script functions. So what are script functions? Well, script functions allow users to record the analysis process and then apply these steps to a new model. It's useful for repeating the same process over and over. For example, saving torque results in Excel for 100 different analysis cases. So instead of going through and running an analysis and then outputting the results to Excel for 100 cases, we can run the analysis once and record the script as we run this analysis and then apply this script to each subsequent analysis so the results will automatically be outputted into Excel. One of the benefits of scripting is that running repetitive processing and condition testing setup is done only once. So Again, in an example where we want to have 100 different iterations, instead of going through and setting up 100 different models, we can set up one script that has a, a function that will iterate 100 times. So for i equals 1 to 100, we can set a value to i times a current, for instance, run the calculation, and then output the torque to a CSV file, and then move on to the next step. So again, everything is automated through this script. As far as condition testing goes, we can run a calculation and extract a certain parameter such as torque. If this parameter is less than a fixed value, then we can increment the value, recalculate and end if that certain parameter is below a fixed value. To set up the script, JMAG uses a general purpose script language. This allows it to easily run scripts in other programs. The supported script languages are VBScript and Python. Scripting steps. It's easy to generate a script as you run an analysis. So we'll look at a short demo where we will go into JMAG and open a model and say start recording. Then we'll run some features in JMAG Designer and once we've finished running our analysis we'll say stop recording. We can then output the script, edit it if we like, and then run the script on different analysis models. So now I'll move to JMAG Designer and let's say we start recording and we want to open our model. So I'll go to this IPM test case, which is just the model that we've, the basic IPM model that has been exported from JMAG Express. 
So with this model, I'll make a couple changes. So I'll go to the properties and I'll change the number of steps from 33 to something smaller such as 3. And I'll delete the iron loss calculation since now that's not going to be functional since we don't have enough steps. And I'll run this act analysis. So with only three steps, it should just take a couple seconds here. But after I run the analysis, what I'm going to do is go in and set up a parameter such as torque. And I'm going to look at the average torque and then export the average torque or export the torque point sequence as a CSV file. All the time that we're running this analysis, the script is being recorded. So every step that analysis step that I've taken is recorded in the script. So now under graphs, I'm going to go to torque, click on show, perhaps set up an average value in the graph, and then go to file and then export. And I'll put this in my script file and I'll call this just testscript1.csv. Click save, overwrite the file and move on. So now I go to stop recording script and I can see the script that was generated uh, to, for this analysis. So we can see that we get set app equals designer, set app new project untitled, load the project file, get study, change the values to three steps, etc, etc. So I can go through and I can edit this script, I can add functionality to this script, or modify it in any way I see fit. So what I'll do is I'll just save this script. So I'll go to file and then save as, and I'll just call this set test script one. Click save. And now, if I go to a new file, or open a new file, I can go to my script, and I can go to the script editor, and I that test script onevbs is opened automatically since it was in the database, but I can go through and I can open any script, and then run that script. And when I run that script, all it's going to do is follow the same analysis steps that I did in the when I recorded the script. So again, we'll go through and it'll change the steps from 33 to 3. It will run the analysis for those three steps. It will come up with the average value for torque and then export the torque value in a CSV file. So now, if I go to my 3D examples folder and scripts, that test script dot one dot CSV is exported. And let's see, if I actually look at the scripts, I can change it to, let's just change it to two and then rerun it. So again, I can use this script to increment. So if I wanted to put that for loop in, I can go through increment values and in not just steps, but the applied current or the other properties, but it would run the analysis. And then I can also increment my output file or my output CSV file. So we run the analysis. And now if I look at my folder, I can see that that test script 2.csv is exported. So again, the scripting is a powerful feature to help automate your analysis. Going back to the presentation, JMeg Designer has a script help function that is structured by object. If you're recording a script and want to add functionality, examine the objects that you can add. Otherwise, if you don't want to start by building a script through the recording function, you can actually build a script from scratch using the online help. In our JMeg script enabled environment, what we see is that in JMeg Designer, the scripting will allow you to do tedious work automatically and add unique functions via scripting. In other programs such as Microsoft Excel, you can run an analysis as a script and import data and export results automatically. So in Microsoft Excel, you can set up your own VB script that will export parameters into JMeg, run the analysis, and then import results back into Excel to do post-processing. In a program such as MATLAB Simulink, now you can set up a script to run analyses based on setting a calculation in or in do things like optimization routines. So again, you're, there's a lot of flexibility and functionality with the scripting features in JMeg. So as a summary of scripting, we can see that we can record scripts for steps you perform while setting up and analyzing a model. It's useful for automatically doing repetitive steps such as results processing. And by sharing scripts with others, you can automate similar tasks. So now let's look at the analysis template functions. So what are analysis template functions? Well, this is a template that allows users to save analysis conditions and result display settings. We can apply these settings to different models. In JMeg, we start with our original model and we run the analysis. 
then we can create a template of that analysis where we set the study type, the analysis conditions, the material properties, the mesh generation, the study properties, the results displays, and the units that went into the settings of that original JMEG model. All this is saved as a template now that can be applied to other models, so it will preserve all those material settings, and once we run the analysis, it will actually preserve the evaluation items. So if we set up a custom contour plot for the flux density, it will preserve those settings for that custom contour plot. In order to transfer our targets, we use sets. So condition settings are accurately transferred by using a set. A set with the same name is transferred even if the winding distribution is changed. So a set is effectively the name of a component. So if we run an analysis, we're going to create sets that are going to define the components. So in this example, we'll have a magnet, rotor, U-phase, V-phase, W-phase, coil, and stator all, all defined as a different set. When we apply that analysis template or that model template to a new geometry, well, the new geometry is going to have the same components. So we're going to have a rotor, magnet, U-phase, V-phase, W-phase, coil, and a stator, but we're going to have a different geometry. So even if every all the parameters are changed, as long as the set names are the same, then the model parameters are going to change over. So let's look at a demo of how this is done. In the first step, we'll, we'll set up a model and we'll save the the analysis as a template. In the second step, we'll apply that template to a different geometry. So if I go back into JMEG, I'll go and create a new model. And what I'll do is I'll open, I will open our template models and I'll go to our IPM base model. So again, this is the same IPM machine that was exported from our JMEG Express setup. And we can see that it's already defined to have sets. So coil one up, coil two up, three up, coil W, motion region, coil, stator core, rotor core, and rotor magnet, all defined as sets. And then we have run an analysis for a no load test where we define the material properties, the analysis conditions, the circuit parameters, and the mesh settings. So if we right click on our model, we can now go to create template and we can export this as the JMEG IPM template. Now, we'll go to a new model, open a new model, and I'll open my JP JMEG SPM model. So this SPM model has the same group names or assembly names and the similar sets, but there's no analysis conditions and no materials defined. So if I bring in my geometry, all I have to do is set up the assembly conditions and create the sets, and now, I can go to apply the template and set that IPM template and it's going to ask me to do part ID matching. So it's going to match the the name coil from my model to the linked item as a coil. Stator core, rotor core, magnet, all the same. The only component that I have in my SPM model that I did not have in my IPM model is a shaft. So that's going to become a floating component and we'll see what happens to the results with that. The same with my sets where the shaft is still just a floating set. Click Finish, and you can see that I've automatically created my study. So no load test, my material properties are applied, my analysis conditions are applied, but since I had that one shaft, which was kind of a floating set, some of my analysis conditions didn't transfer over, which means that I just have to go back in and double check that all the analysis conditions are set correctly. But as far as model setup goes, so if I use the template, again, I can ensure that the settings are the same from that initial model, which is the IPM, to this new model, which is the SPM. So if you are doing the same type of analysis on different geometries, then templates can help you reduce the model setup time. Templates can also ensure that you are evaluating the same results for each new model. Parametric and optimization functions. Typically, numerous cases have to be evaluated to optimize parameter values and evaluate the effects of a design variables on device's performance. JMEG's parametric tool can reduce the setup time when evaluating models' designs. So what are parametric functions? Well, a parametric function is a parameter that is assigned to a dimension and or an analysis condition. A group of all these, then all these parameters are grouped in a single location and you can define their values or range of values from that location. Parametric functions seek to address the concerns below. Mainly, won't creating models with different geometries and conditions take a lot of work? And how much time will it take to calculate all these different models and then finally go through and organize the results and evaluate them? 
So let's take a look at doing a parametric study on that IPM motor. So we can see that step one for a parametric study is to select the design variables, step two is to convert it to single parameters, and step three is to run the analysis. So if we go back into our JMAG model, I'll go to a parametric study that I've already set up. And in this parametric study, I've defined some CAD parameters that I wanted to parameterize. So the distance of the magnet, or the magnet width, and the magnet thickness. So in order to parameterize CAD values, I have to have my link to my CAD program open. In this case, my CAD link is based on my geometry editor, but you can also link to programs such as SolidWorks, CATIA, and ProE. So again, I have my CAD model open now. So if I go back to JMAG Designer, now we can see that the CAD parameters, I don't have my little warning sign. And if I go to Case Control, I can go to Select Parameters. So for this parametric study, I'm going to adjust the magnet thickness value, and I'm going to choose from a different value to adjust as well. So I can set any of the following parameters, whether they be the materials, the study properties, the mesh properties, the analysis conditions such as the rotational speed or eccentricity analysis, and the circuit. And so I'm going to choose the magnet distance as value and the phase angle. Click OK. And if I go to Create Cases, I can then choose how I want to generate my parametric values. So I can use a constant value, increment, divisions, or just a table. If I go to not set and click generate, it's just going to generate the default values. And I can at that point go to add cases and then change the values. So for this example, I'll change that magnet thickness to three, from three millimeters to five millimeters to six millimeters. So I have three different parametric cases. And now we can see that I have my parametric slider bar populated with those three cases. If I go through my parametric slider bar, now it's going to adjust my magnet thickness to five millimeters and then to six millimeters. So now in my study, if I click on run all cases, it'll run all the cases of my parametric analysis. So as I mentioned, linked geometries can also be parameterized. So JMAG has a variety of linking functions to make geometry analysis easy. So again, we can go to JMAG geometry, JMAG's Geometry Editor, JMAG Express, but we can also link to third-party programs such as SOLIDWORKS, CATIA, ProEngineer, and NX. Changes made within JMAG's parametric function are then applied to the different CAD geometries. Small changes can also be parameterized. We have what we call a morphing function, which is used for geometry changes to a meshed model. With morphing functions, one part of a geometry can be modified without changing the number of nodes or elements. In this example, we're going to modify the bridge distance. So we'll select our morphing function and set that as a design variable, and then we'll choose different values for the thickness of that bridge. The morphing function isn't going to, is, isn't going to change the actual geometry. All it's going to do is adjust to the meshed geometry. So in this case, we're going to go from a thinner bridge to a thicker bridge without changing the number of elements or the nodes. The parameterized values can also be equation driven. So relational expressions can be defined for design variables by using equations. In this example, we want to change the magnet's aspect ratio while keeping the volume constant. So our magnet width is set as a, an equation where it's equal to the volume, which is a fixed value, divided by the magnet depth. The magnet depth is our driving variable, and the magnet width is our driven variable. So our driving variable is defined in the, in the list of parameters, and our driven variable is calculated based on the equation. When we go through and analyze the results from a parametric study, it's very easy to pull everything all together in JMAG. So in this example, we can look at drawing a motor speed torque curve. So we take our input model and we parameterize the speed, and then we set our rotation speed to 100 RPM intervals. Then we look at the torque at each rotation speed and take the average value of torque at each rotation speed and create a response graph for rotation speed versus torque. 
JMEG optimization is effectively just an extension to the parametric, parametric tool. So instead of just setting the design variables, now we can apply objective functions and constraint conditions. So JMEG will go through based on the constraints and the objective functions and define what parameters should be set and then run the analysis and display the results for the analysis in a handy table. So we can see that it's easy to set up a parametric analysis in JMEG. Settings, case management, and results evaluations can be done effic efficiently even with multiple calculations. Optimization can also be run as an, an extension of the parametric tool. JMAG VTB or Virtual Test Bench. So first of all, what is JMAG VTB? It's an automation system that lets you run analyses and create reports simply by selecting a scenario to meet your objective from a wide variety of scenarios. With JMAG VTB, you can get the results you want just by preparing the geometry data, even if you don't know how to use the software or have little analysis experience. So when we looked at that model template where we had the sets and the material names, we would start with that same base where we had our SPM motor and we would define the names of the components and then the sets. Then instead of just applying a single analysis, condition or a single model condition onto that new model, we would apply an analysis scenario. So an analysis scenario would say that, well, we want to run the thermal study on this transformer. So we're not just going to set up the transformer to run a, a load value. We're going to actually set up the transformer to run the load value and then take those loads and losses into a thermal study and run a thermal analysis. So it's not just running a single analysis, it's actually running a template based on numerous analyses steps. So we're just setting the input geometry and then defining what we want to get from that input geometry. The database stores scenarios and previous results. So evaluation results and models that have already run can be searched and previous scenarios can be applied to new models. So for this analysis to target, which is our, in this case, our transformer, we can look at previous analyses, which might be the thermal analysis, or apply different analysis models onto that device. We then have a way to store the analysis results to go back later and then make sure that, and see what previous models we've run. More detailed evaluation and analysis is possible by launching JMEG Designer's interface, which is a single click from the results dashboard. This allows for seamless integration with more detailed evaluation using JMAG Designer. So we run our transformer analysis scenario, our thermal scenario in JMAG VTB, and the result, if we click on any one of the results, we can actually launch JMAG Designer to do further evaluation of those results. We can also create original scenarios and edit scenarios based on JMAG Designer scripting. So again, we can use JMAG Designer's script to make modifications to an existing scenario to add functionality or basically apply our, our knowledge. So even people without much analysis experience or who are not familiar with using the software can get the results they want. We basically, we create a process for the steps of the analysis. Analysis work can be easily spread to other people by creating these processes and giving them the ability to run those processes on their models. How can you use VTB? Well, you can start using VTB right now if you have JMEG version 11 or later. No need for more licenses because JMEG VTB uses JMEG's designers pre-post and solver licenses. The latest version of JMEG VTB is 2.0 and is included with JMEG designer version 12. For JMEG VTB 2.0 has an improved GUI interface and better scenario choices. Finally, report functions. Once you've actually run the analysis, well now you need to generate the report and capture all the results in a single source. And this is where report functions can come into play, because now you can automatically create reports showing setting conditions and results for each calculation case. The output is in HTML format and display items can be selected. So you can choose, do you want to see the torque waveform, the voltage waveform, or do you want to look at contour plots or uh, vector plots? We can also see design variable values and response graphs from parametric analyses. So as a summary of this seminar, automation and improved efficiency in analysis works not only to improve your effectiveness, but also improves your communication with your colleagues. We hope you will use these as a means to transmit your knowledge throughout your organization and help set benchmarks for how analyses should be generated. Trial versions are available for free
So why not give JMAG's automation and efficiency improvement functions a try? If you have any questions, feel free to contact us at any one of the following locations. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to seeing you during the next webinar.